Let's get started with Path of Exile for a brand new beginner's guide. Let's get started with creating a brand new character for the Settlers of Kalgur. So create a new character, go ahead and hit OK. And then what you're going to do is you are going to select the Ranger. This is going to be a full walkthrough guide for someone that's never played Path of Exile before. Uh, so my suggestion is to put this on another monitor so you can play side by side because this is not like other action RPGs. This game requires a full walkthrough for a new player. Otherwise, you're going to be lost and you're going to mess up your build and it's like a permanent mess up. So just make a ranger. If you want to change things later, that's fine. But create a ranger. I'm going to go ahead and start my character. You have to type in the name of the character. So I'm going to name it Cal, just so I know for my reference what the league is. But make sure that we have settlers uh, in and that's going to be the new season. Otherwise, you don't get the new content. But let's get started. So in the very beginning, you're going to wake up uh, we're, I'm going to skip all the tutorials. I'll teach you how to play the game. But if you want to change things in the very beginning, go to the options here. Uh, one thing that I highly, highly recommend changing is this specifically. It's called uh, landscape transparency. It just declutters the screen. If you want to also change the map zoom, zoom out all the way. These are the like settings that I really recommend. But let's get started. So change your controls if you want to. I like left click to be force move. Uh, and I also like to bind it over here. So that way I can always pick up items and I'm not using the skill. We're gonna skip out on all the uh, like dialogue here, but you'll see I need to put something on attack. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on one of my uh, keys. Now I'm gonna take this burning arrow. It's, you'll always get the exact same skill at the very beginning. I'm gonna put it inside my green socket. So green gem goes in green socket. And then later we're gonna get what's called a support gem. So now we have a skill called burning arrow. If I right click, it's gonna shoot a burning arrow. It's gonna do some damage over time. And in the very beginning, pick up pretty much everything that you see, as uh, you're going to need basically scroll of identities if you played like Diablo 2. That's what we're kind of picking up. Now we've got our first support gem. We can put a support gem, which is going to give us um, the ability to have increased attack speed when we get what's called momentum, which is just going to be granted uh, when we go ahead and attack with a skill that's linked with it. So green support gem goes in the green socket if they are linked, meaning that there is a little line between them. That means that they will work uh, with each other. And also, uh, for the potions, you'll see over on the bottom uh, left, when we go ahead and drink the mana potion, that's going to give us mana. We're coming up to our first little elite boss over here, Hillock. And uh, he's pretty easy, especially for this build. And our goal is to be a melee build, actually, but for now, kind of don't have a choice. I'm going to go and pick up a bunch of items and uh, go right into town. We also leveled up. We're going to go ahead and go to town first. And we'll talk more about like leveling. But your potions in this game aren't on cooldown unless it's a special one or you have certain things that can change it. They refill on kills. So red potion gives you HP. When you have no HP, you die. The other one's tied to mana, which is our abilities. We're going to talk to all the NPCs really quick. Uh, just so there's not an exclamation above their head. And then what we can do is we're going to sell all the items we're not going to use. Now, I want to play this build as a melee build. So what we're going to need to do is if you got an item to drop off the boss, that's cool. But if you didn't, you may need to get an item from the NPC here. So what we're going to try to do is pick up a two-hander. And you're, you're going to have a scroll of wisdom, so don't worry about this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, rusted spike so we can actually use a melee skill. Because otherwise, we cannot use a melee skill. Now what we're going to do is um, we are going to also click on Hillock Reward from Tarkley. Because we killed that like boss, that guy will actually uh, give us a reward for killing them. And the skill that we're going to get is called Frost Blades. Because all the melee skills really got a massive buff. So we're going to take that one. And I'm going to take the Frost Blades, put it in here, and see how it's linked. If you didn't get one that's linked, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But if you happen to get one that like is linked, cool. If not, again, don't worry about it. You can still get it later. And in this game, you cannot equip unidentified items. So we're just going to go ahead and right click on the identification scroll. If I hold shift, I can use it multiple times, but uh, we only have two here. I'm just going to go ahead and equip these just so we have some items. And then if I want to equip a shield, we can do that too. But if I get a two hander, then I can't use a shield. That's fine. No big deal. And I want to get rid of all of these other items. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell it to the NPC. So we can go to sell items. We can drag and drop them, or I can just hold control and left click and that will give me these little small things called currency in the game Goodbye. and that's how we kind of get items so the next thing is, is we have a passive skill point we're going to go and put one in i know it looks super overwhelming the skill tree in this game is crazy 
but we're gonna go ahead and put one into this one over here, which is gonna give us extra accuracy. And on top of that, it's going to give us, um, eventually giving us a lot more attack speed because it's nice to have attack speed in the very beginning. So remember how we just swapped skills? We're gonna have to also re-equip the skill, which is gonna be Frost Blades now. Let's go ahead and continue. But we're also streaming this over on uh, Twitch and YouTube and TikTok. So if, if you guys are watching this as uh, a full beginner's guide if you guys have any questions you guys are always welcome to come in but uh, do i have a favorite game right now uh to answer a question uh i'll see how this league goes but i've been really enjoying marvel rivals and uh recently been playing um the uh kill the justice league game and that actually just got a recent update as well oh it looks like the game crashed okay so we just reloaded it from the game keep in mind day one uh, a lot of people may actually uh, have some connectivity issues. Someone else over here just said stop Vulcan switch to D12. This could actually fix the issue. So let's go ahead and actually do that for the graphics. That could be causing an issue. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so we had just swapped settings. This is a frequently thing I guess that's going on right now. So just make sure that you have specifically under the display settings uh, Direct X12 instead of Vulcan, which is supposed to be Vulcan supposed to be the better one But I guess it's causing an issue for some people right now Keep in mind when games just launch sometimes there's you know server issues or whatever that could be the fix So it looks like like you see people are just crashing. Yeah, so That could be something to take into consideration uh, Just like with any video game the first day like of a brand new season or something sometimes things happen man But right now we're gonna be in the coast and if we uh, open up the uh, map, um, you can see kind of where we're at. So uh, you can see all the different hotkeys over here. Like the like this one is the world screen is U. That's uh, my key. I don't know if I changed that by default, but that's one I have set up. We're just gonna go ahead and eliminate the uh, little guys over here. And if you see any like chests, just go ahead and open them. Take all the loot. Eventually, we're gonna have to get some extra scrolls of wisdom so we can identify our pieces of gear. But always level up your stuff. Uh, there were, there are going to be some skills that you won't want to level up, but I'll mention that later as we kind of progress. We're just going to kind of go up and to the right here. Sometimes they do update, and when there's a new league, they update the location of certain things. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. But uh, melee got significantly buffed, so that's why we're playing melee this league. Otherwise, I would definitely be playing <laughs> uh, a bow variant because I like bow the most. Okay, so that one's got three green links. That's actually pretty nice in the very beginning. I'm just gonna head and hit the NPC. This is actually a very difficult boss fight. Wow. They really like... Sometimes they just make the difficulty go up as time goes on. And Pee-wee's always been a pretty difficult game, especially for beginners. Uh, you can see... Ooh, so close. We almost, almost ripped, but... We came through. And so if you, by the way, die at any point in this game, don't worry. This game is... It's not beginner-friendly. Very, very difficult especially in the earlier stages of the game because you have no resistances. But later, we're going to get a bunch of resistances. And we're getting gold now. That's a new currency uh, uh, for this league specifically. That would only slow me down. Uh, let's see what... Uh, this one's giving us more evasion because it's uh, a blue. So it looks like we're coming up to our first little like brand new league mechanic over here. So interact to begin the encounter. So let's see how hard this is. Sometimes these are always like... Almost every single league for the past few leagues has been super, super overtuned, meaning that it's like way harder than it should be. And in the very beginning, sometimes it's better not to do the lead mechanic, and it's because the rewards aren't that great because it's like level one content. But we'll see. We're at least going to experiment with it, and I'll show you guys, and I'll tell you if it's worth it or not. But most of the time, for the past few leagues, it's never really been worth it. Lastly, that I remember that was like actually super worth it. Uh, especially in like the very very earlier stages of the game it's like uh, ultimatum that was a really good league for like early early stuff so it looks like we got another mana flask over here and if you run out of room it's fine let's go ahead and drop maybe some stuff we don't need we got a scepter here uh do we have we have no scrolls of wisdom unfortunately so we cannot use that uh at the moment but later hopefully we'll be able to do so so we have extra armor. I'm going to get, get some armor in the very beginning just so we're not super squishy. And let's continue. What we're trying to go towards, there's like these two areas that I'll, it'll kind of branch off. It looks like it's going to be down here. Sometimes, again, they switch up the uh, the map. 
But from here... Uh, by the way, the game never pauses, so... Uh, uh, next up, we're just going to get more attack speed and more projectile damage. And you'll see, as far as our skills go, it, it'll tell us on the skill what it is. Um, like this one, for example, is a attack, projectile, melee, strike, and cold. So it does like all of those things. If we hit this thing and it can't hit us back. <laughs> there we go. And later we're going to be getting a mobility skill and stuff. But let's go ahead and continue. So with the waypoints, you no longer need to actually touch them to actually gain them. You just walk by and it should just grant you the waypoint. But this is a way where we can go back in, in and out of town. And since my inventory is kind of full, we're going to go back to town. There's another strategy that you can do by logging out of the game, but because the game may be having issues, I probably don't recommend to do that in the first like week of the game because if you log out, you could lose your like queue time and you might have to sit there and queue. So I'm just going to go sell everything over here. We're going to get at least one scroll of wisdom, so that's going to be awesome. This uh, this has uh, less evasion range, so we'll get rid of that one. Farewell. But in the very beginning, you're just looking for like any small amount of upgrades uh, possible. Now, we could equip this, but then I wouldn't... Actually, we can put this over here. They're linked, <laughs> which is important. Now, we could also go to purchase items, and if there's something that we want to get, uh, we could maybe try to look for uh, an item to actually use, like... Um, Getting a maximum energy shield is really not bad. Like, uh, let's see if there's anything else. We have extra physical damage. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, actually getting any sort of regen is kind of nice, but is it worth using a transmutation? For me personally, no, but uh, let's just go ahead and continue uh, and play. We can actually identify this, and sometimes you can sell things for different values. So let me go and show you guys. So if I go to sell items, you can see it's giving us transmit shards. Now, if I identify it, what does it give us? It gives me alteration shards. So this could be something to consider as well. Uh, this one's not too bad, actually. Take we can care. maybe use this. And if I get an item and you don't have that item, don't feel like, oh, I need to have the same exact items at all time. It's random on what drops. But now we're going to go back to the waypoint. And we specifically want to go to not the mud flats, but the uh, side area. So from the coast over here, we're going to go to the tidal island. We're going to get this quest completed called the medicine chest. And it's going to allow us to get uh, some extra mobility gonna give us a quicksilver flask so it'll be a lot faster this is actually one of the most difficult bosses in the game it's a side quest right now and the reason why it's like difficult is because eventually we're gonna get so strong that most of the stuff in the campaign doesn't matter because uh, i'll tell you guys how to build your character and stuff but the reason why this one's hard is in the very beginning you don't really have good access to like like the, the cold mitigation ideally you want a lot of cold resistance for this uh, we can do the new mechanic, and I'll let you guys know if it's worth it. So far, I mean, it, it gave us, like, one yellow item. So, until we fill up, like, you know, all of our rings, uh, you know, our amulet, we'll, we'll, we'll try out these, and I'll see if we're getting any small amounts of currency to make this actually viable. So, we're just gonna go ahead and attack this. We don't really have enough attack speed for this to feel very good in the very beginning. To be honest, you could level up with bow, but I, I don't want this uh, playthrough guide to be confusing, so I'm not going to swap too fast. Because a lot of builds, you may want to swap, and uh, it can be kind of frustrating for a walkthrough to swap builds like halfway through. So we're going to stick with pretty much melee the whole way through. I say pretty much, because it's also kind of a ranged melee build. But we'll, we're going to be getting some new skills, and we'll try out other things with this build as well. So now we got some crimson ore. As far as the loot goes, it wasn't really anything too good. Uh, although that thing was kind of nice right there. Leveling up our momentum. We have another skill point, And we're going to get even more attack speed. Because in the very beginning of the game, if you don't have attack speed, the game just feels bad. It's just kind of how all action RPGs are. But just attack once or twice, move along. And we're going to come up to... This is... Oh, wait. It looks kind of like this. But you want to eliminate these because they can chill, which means you're going to be slower. It's just like any other action RGB, cold damage generally like slows. Pick up all the scrolls of wisdom that you see, definitely. Do I prefer Diablo 2 or 4? I like both of them, but I probably have like 10 times the amount of hours in Diablo 2. When I was in high school, man, I literally played that game like anytime I had free time, it was Diablo 2. Always Diablo 2. The virtual keyboard is not working on PS5. I don't know what else to tell you, man. Um, other than maybe check the settings. I don't know if... Uh, they have it like enabled by default 
But the game's not that bad with controller. I played a little bit of this game with controller. And if you want to play this with controller, hey, plug, plug one in. But this is a hail rake. So this is very important. A attack and move with this guy because when he does his little, like, ice spike ability, the ice spikes actually do a pretty good amount of damage and they will slow you down. So just hit him once and move. And if you, if you copy my exact tree, you'll have enough attack speed for this to feel good. Okay, so we're going to pick up all these things. And uh, we don't need this. Uh, we're going to pick up... Okay, these aren't linked, but this one over here could be an upgrade. So we got one to two cold damage. Cool. And we have some lightning resists. Oh, but we're not level five, so we can't use them yet. Okay, so we'll have to gain one level to use that. And to save time, what you can do, instead of using a portal scroll, uh, you can actually log out of the game. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do this because this is actually the smart thing to do. And we're going to log right back in. And see, we're back at town, and I just saved myself a town portal scroll. Now, if your PC sucks, then maybe just use the portal scroll. But, uh, yeah. So now we have either uh, a peer support. And one thing to take note of is you see on the very bottom where it says supportable skills, Frostblades, and it has that check mark. That means it works with it. If it does not have that check mark, it means it does not work. So do I really need this piercing? Not really. In fact, the chance to poison would be actually like better. But I don't have like a three link. So it doesn't really matter what we select in this instance over here. But if it says X, that means it does not work with the uh, skill. The only reason why I'd want this is because it gives us chaos damage. But you can also purchase uh, gems from the NPC. If there's something that kind of like looks like, oh, I kind of want to try out this. And if you're ever wondering, when can I get a very specific skill? I'm going to stick with like melee for the most part with this. But you can see that there's all these different uh, skills that you can get. We already have frost blades here. There's spectral throw. Run whatever you want, honestly. It's not super specific that you stick with uh, specifically frost blades. Uh, but if you do run something, I would just suggest running it so it has some sort of elemental damage because that's what we're going to scale earlier on but you can kind of run what you want to it's very flexible uh, but if we need maybe another support skill over here you can see this works with frost blades but this is a red now i do want to run this because it's actually pretty cool and i'll show you guys what this does so i'm going to go and pick up one of these and hopefully we can get a red and a uh green linked so we're going to go ahead and i'll talk to tarkley he's going to give us uh the option to maybe buy something let's go ahead and sell all these like things because the reward that we wanted was this, which is really helpful. We're going to save the gloves because we want to use those gloves. And let's see if we can get... Oh, this could be massive. Because it's got a two reds and a green, and they're all linked, which is fantastic. Now, I'm going to see if there's another one that we can get. We have an armor over here. Um, but I'm pretty sure we'll end up replacing the armor. Oh, this is kind of nice because it's giving us armor and evasion. But the shield will be probably better to take. And the reason why I'm going to take the shield unless there's a weapon actually let's just take the shield so what we're going to be able to do now Farewell. is if we have any other support gems that are in the red so i can go here and i can check for other red support and now i don't have the currency right now so i can't run multiples but i'm going to swap these shields and again don't feel like you always have to copy everything exactly but i'm going to put in frost blades here i'm also going to i can't put these in because i don't have that the correct linkage and then I'm going to take this Ancestral Call, put it in here, and I'll show you guys what that does. And then so now we can go back to our waypoint over here. If you had opened a portal, that's fine too. But the reason why is this area branches off into two areas. And we have our Quicksilver Flask, which I'm going to go ahead and equip. And so uh, I'm going to put this on three. So what the Quicksilver Flask does is it allows us to actually uh, have like a movement speed boost. You want to learn this game? Oh, I this is the perfect time, man. Now's your chance to learn the game. We'll build it going for us. So we're going to be starting off with uh, Lightning Strikes, which is a really good skill. And it, all the melee skills got massively buffed. If you see any blue, green, and red linked like that one, pick it up. In the earlier stages, mana definitely becomes a problem. Uh, in this area over here, called the Mud Flats, we're going to be looking for these uh, seashells. So the quest items are marked in green. You'll see that they're green. I also have a loot filter, so uh, I may have like different settings on some of these but they should still be green by default. Green is quest items. Oh, Coral Ring, that's gonna give us extra HP, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and open up this. And we are level five, so we can now equip those gloves that we were waiting for. I can throw the other ones on the ground. And pretty much now we don't have to pick up every piece of garbage that we find on the ground. It's just in the earlier stages, just to get extra scrolls of wisdom. Like now we have, well, I only have one, so maybe. Maybe we need to pick up a little bit more garbage for a little bit. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this little growth. We got a chain belt. So we're gonna now we're gonna have energy shield. It's just like Diablo with shields. You, it, it takes away your shields first, and it kind of recharges like uh, the shields in Halo. Oh, we got a Quicksilver Flask, very nice. It's gonna let us go a little bit faster. Eventually, we don't have to run as many mana potions. It's just in the earlier stages, we're gonna need to do it. Ooh, is this three green? Oh, it's two. Uh, this one has some gems, so we can still level up the gems, even if we're not like using them. As long as they're equipped on our pieces of gear, we'll, we'll be good to go. But as far as uh, killing the stuff to get rewards, it's, it's okay, it's really not that bad. Uh, just for some small little bonuses, but I'll probably mainly suggest focusing in on just completing the campaign and getting to the end game because you really don't get anything good until later, but I'll still kind of do one or two of these per act. So now that we collected all three of those seashells, and if you didn't get one or didn't get all three, you should be able to get them as you progress, but they're just kind of scattered in this area, but you click on the wall and then you're going to go enter the submerged passage. Also, another quick little thing to mention uh, is that I will have all the quests in the uh, pinned as well as there's going to be timestamps in this video. But yeah, there's a new update today. Just came out. That's why everyone's playing this game right now. Ooh, we have a uh, another item over here. We have a medium mana flask. Medium bit better than the small. So we're going to keep on attacking this thing over here. There's another one where it, like, it does slow you down if you get hit by it. So kind of move, move and attack. That's kind of like the thing in this game, especially in the earlier stages. Later though, I mean, you could probably face tank a lot of this stuff, uh, except for like the bigger bosses in the game. Okay, look at this. Okay, make sure we grab the scroll of wisdom. We just got another skill point. We're gonna go ahead and put in more attack speed. We just want as much attack speed as possible in the very beginning. Then we're gonna get some more HP and more and more attack speed. Because without attack speed, the game definitely feels a lot worse. But we're gonna get a lot more damage very soon. Just leveled up. Nice, we have another skill point, more attack speed. But yeah, Lightning Strike is a projectile too. It pretty much works really well with this. My mana is gone. And don't worry about killing every enemy that you see on screen. Just kind of kill a couple things as you move along. Open up all the chests that you see. We have uh, this. I don't even see the Ancestral Call. Oh, okay, there it is. So, how it should work, if you see it, it's a little, like, red guy, and he also attacks something next to uh, my target. So, what we're looking for in this area is Dweller in the Deep. That's the next quest that we're going to do, and it's going to give us a skill point. But this area has two different areas that it branches to. So, one is a quest to get an additional skill point, and we're gonna do all the skill point quests as we go along. There's another strategy to do it all at the very end, but it's up to you. I think it's way better for a beginner's guide to do it in the very beginning. And the reason why is we're not really here trying to speed run. And things looks like they're about to level up. Let's see. We don't really need to, okay, we can maybe drop this. Running out of room. Oh man, these guys are very tanky. Nice, we just leveled up. It's great. And we will get this over here, which is gonna give us extra projectile damage speed. It looks like there's a new mechanic, and again, I'm gonna do more of the mechanics as we progress but it, so far it's not like dropping insanely good gear but the mechanic is quick it's like a minute but i want to try to get us out of act one as quickly as possible so you'll see uh, over on the top right there's an exit here but we don't want to go towards the exit yet there's kind of two options that you can do for speed running yet yeah, you can go towards that exit if you see it first but 
Again, I think it's much better for a newer player's guide to get all the skill points as soon as possible because it's going to make your progression a little bit smoother. You're getting more HP is going to be better. So we're going to be looking for Dweller in the Deep. So what we uh, also can do is uh, we can make a portal and then we can go back and technically that would save a little bit of time. Like I said, you don't have to kill every single thing, but we're going to go and we're looking from the submerged passage into the flooded depths. We'll be doing a walkthrough again. Oh, yes, Pinner, we're doing it right now, man. Yes, sir. So we'll do the full walkthrough for this uh, brand new playstyle slash build. It's going to be frost blades. As much as I kind of want to do that thing, we got this uh, movement speed, so I want to take advantage of it. But... I think in every area there is one of those new league mechanics where it's kind of like it's closest to like a ritual league but you don't have to sit there as long which is great so from the flooded depths we're going to be looking for a boss and most of the bosses in this game actually have the very same mechanic you want to attack and move and go behind the uh the boss in general most of the time My mana is gone. the bosses will attack from the front We're coming up to our first essence, which is cool. I can show you guys how this works. So how an essence works is there's like these monsters that are frozen. And if I click on it, it's going to unfreeze it. And it's the boss. It's a dweller in the deep. If you're trying to get hit by those little like pools of blood, it will make you take a lot of damage over time. And those will stack up. So I try to hit once and move, hit once and move. go down eventually it's almost halfway down it's actually quite challenging they definitely have beefed him up now, frostbite is still pretty decent skill though for leveling I mean I personally think that uh, anything with dot is still pretty good as well Just getting flat numerical damage is kind of what we need, like added cold damage. Because uh, I believe Frostblades doesn't give you flat damage anymore, it just has a bigger base. Which is better for late game, but in the early game, the small numbers actually help out quite a bit. Because 100% of something that's like so low doesn't matter because you have nothing to scale off. But we're, we're going to get all this up very, very fast. Okay, there we go. So we got some boots. Oh. We have no more room. Okay, we're going to get rid of some of these things. So we have... Uh, let's see. We're definitely going to pick up this. That will convert a um, item. So on the... Depending on the item. So this one, on other armor, it's going to give us some life. Or on... Let's see. I just have chest. But on the helmet, it's going to give us life. Everywhere, it's going to give us life. So that's a pretty nice thing to have. Then we also have... Uh, let's see what this damage is. Four... Or... 9 to 13 is okay damage. Plus it gives us extra attack speed, but these boots could give us movement speed. And if there's any movement speed on boots in the very beginning, we're always going to take that because it's going to be huge. So now we're going to go and we can walk back. In fact, it's probably faster if I just go to a uh, character screen because we've already completed the quest. And I don't think there was anything else that I wanted from this. Oh, uh, there's like a small amount of flask, I guess. Maybe, maybe this sword is better. We're going to have to identify it. Four to 17. Um, going to be lower. So that's going to be a nope. And if I want to run a two-ender, I can as well. So we have two options. I'll, I'll activate a portal just so you guys can see it. You can also just leave the game, come back. <laughs> no Lightning Arrow. Uh, we can play Lightning Arrow with this build still, which is cool. But now we're going to go talk to Tarkley. He's going to give us a reward. And now we get Sniper's Mark, we get Bear Trap, Puncture, or we can get a Ballista here. So um, this does say requires a bow, so I can't use this. We can also run Puncture if we want to. And honestly, we're just going to go run it just, just for the sake of showing you guys. It's also Stay sharp, this uh, book of skill. Right click on it. It's going to give us a passive. Now we're going to get some extra HP and more attack speed. 
more attack speed in the very beginning. So now we're going to go back to the waypoint over here. And we're going to go right back into the submerged passage. Let me go move my face so you can see kind of where we're going. You don't have to get all the waypoints. I'll pretty much tell you guys the important ones to go for. But now we've got to walk back to the other area. And if you do exit the game, it won't save your portal. But we, since we already cleared out the monsters, it's not going to take that long to go through it. But click on all the chests that you can see. And I'll we'll also pick up the scroll wisdom. And if we have any stragglers, we can kill the stragglers. And if you want to organize while you're moving at the same time, that, that's a good way to save some time. So we're going to swap out this mana potion over here. If you have three of the same, you can upgrade it. Like, uh, for example, that's the other one we're going to have to identify. Um, so I'll t I can take these three mana flasks and I... Oh, wait, this is a life one. Oh, we can upgrade our life flask. And I'll show you guys how to do what's called a vendor recipe uh, once we get back to the town in the next one. But this is not Path of Exile 2, Giovanni. This is uh, Pee Wee 1. Not Diablo. All right, so let's keep on going. And can you play this Xbox right now? Uh, if someone wants to let me know if they've changed it, because usually how it works is console gets the update on Tuesday, while PC gets it on Friday. It's just like a, a console thing, but I don't know if things have changed. The last console that I have uh, is, is a PS4. I haven't played on a while on console, so I couldn't tell you if it, uh, is up. But usually that's how it is for console. Alright, so let's keep on going. Oh, we got a yellow chest piece. This could be an actual nice upgrade here. Let's go ahead and see if this is good. But remember, our main weapon... Our, actually, no. We, you know what? This is our main damage over here. So maybe we can use this. Let's see. So it's giving us uh, extra life. And we have regen. Regen life is really good in the very beginning of the game. And if I don't have you know, the ability to level up the gems, it's, it's no big deal. In fact, the chance of poison is pretty much whatever now at this point. It's just earlier on, if I got two to four poison damage, it just... It'll, it'll be better than nothing if we happen to have something else that had uh the extra socket but in the later stages of the game we're gonna have uh six sockets wow this thing has incredible hp like it's a lot of hp oh i told you guys we'd mess with puncture so let's mess with that uh, puncture instead of frost blades so we can mess around oh you know what it might require like a slashing weapon and so the skill may not work uh, let me see or it'll say like swords or something. So once we get a sword, we can probably use that puncture if we wanted to. Some skills require very specific uh, weapon type. Go to the waypoint. This boss is actually quite difficult, so be ready to pop a lot of potions. My mana is gone. I'm gonna pop mana. And if you ever run out of potions, you can always go back to town. Or you can just go find some smaller enemies to kill, and that can also work. Keep on dragging the boss or waiting for like our mana or whatever to go up you don't have to kill this boss by the way this this guy is actually kind of overtuned in fact a lot of the stuff in path of exile <laughs> is kind of overtuned in the earlier stages of the game that's why a lot of people honestly quit <laughs> this game but this game's amazing if you just get to the end game that's like our main goal end game is where path of exile is a lot more fun but i actually don't mind the leveling process in this game especially because they they change up the game quite a bit like and we're playing a completely different skill from uh, what we were playing uh, last league. So this is three greens over here. Can maybe make use out of that. Because now my skill can be triple, uh, like it has three skills. So I'm gonna swap uh, to this if we can use it. So let's go ahead and identify it because you can't use unidentified. And even though that thing might have more stats, uh, I want more damage. So I'm gonna run cross blades in this. Oh, uh, we have an iron ring that's gonna give us some flat damage. So now we can run that like chance to poison and wherever that momentum support is, we can run that. 
But as you add more gems, it's going to cost more mana. So medium life flask. So we'll go ahead and equip that one. And you can't swap to another flask and have it like automatically full. Hopefully it's this way. Sometimes in action RPGs you go all the way around. It's like at the very, very end. This is a. This one maybe can be used too. Actually, swap this. Oh, uh, the reason why we're keeping this one and the why we had it originally was because it's a blue, green, and red. And the reason why we're saving that is because we can get a what's called a chromatic orb. So. Remember how the sockets in this game had different colors? If I want to change the colors, it that will randomize it. But we can also guarantee it with other things in the game, like crafting. So we're going to keep on attacking the boss over here. How this guy works is you don't want to stand on the, the blue circles. There's a lot of bosses like that in this game. But yeah, this league is all about melee. Like, everyone's playing melee this league because it's finally, like, much better. In fact, most of the skills got, like, double DPS. Oh, nice. We got a Sapphire Ring. If you get any Sapphire Rings, pick them up as we are going to be wanting them for later. Honestly, I, though, even with these buffs, I think I would be much faster playing bow. But I'm going to I'm gonna stick with this because I want to see what we can do with this, uh, this new build. It'll be much better, I would say, later in the game. But we're going to go ahead and identify this. We get extra cold rest. Nice. Because the act boss for act one is going to be a cold damage dealer. So now we are at the climb. We're going to be going to like the prisons. We're going to get the, hopefully get the waypoint somewhere nearby. Nice. We've got a little thing for flask. What that item is, is called a glass blower's bobble. And that will increase the kind of the potency of our potions, but don't use them at the very beginning. It's not worth it. There's the mechanic over there. Again, if you want to do it, it's fine. I don't think it's terrible for the drops, but I'll do like one or two during each act so we can see if it's worth doing it. We have a bunch of skill points. Actually, we have two skill points. We get more HP. Boom. We want to get a lot of HP in the very beginning. Usually there's going to be like some sort of music that goes along with it too. When you're close. Ah, so I got you, Yaha. So I would recommend following some sort of build guide. Ooh, we're coming up to what's called a legion. So we'll show off all these like different mechanics. This is a like this is this what's its like own season. So how this works is you you click on it, it spawns a bunch of monsters, and then ideally you want to look for rewards that you want. Uh, like this one over here is weapons and you have like a set time so we have 20 seconds to kill as many monsters as possible or these little things uh, looks like we already have this one so we're gonna open up this chest so you, you kill the thing and if you kill it you get to I guess get the rewards is the best way to put it but this one's pretty straightforward and just like in Diablo 1 try not to get super surrounded We'll be getting a lightning strike eventually, and uh, it'll be... Uh, I like lightning strike a little bit more. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the chest, and maybe we can get an upgrade. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, I, I was going to show you guys the upgrade, but basically just take three of the flasks to the NPC, and you'll get an upgrade. Actually, we do have three large mana. Uh, we have... That's medium. But yeah, it'll go from small to medium, and then obviously you can go up. But you just go to the NPC... We'll give it to them. We're going to save this ring for later. Let's see. What was that thing that we got? 
Oh, did, wasn't there a, uh... Yeah, we didn't go grab the blade. Also, we should try to get a mobility skill. We can get one next time we go back real quick. I'll go back when we have the next uh... waypoint. So we can go in and out real fast without having to waste a potion or a portal. Okay, there we go. And pretty soon we should be able to have two Quicksilver flasks. Eventually, I like to run like three Quicksilver flasks, and then I like to have one mana potion and one healing potion. It's a little bit more dangerous playing like that, but you get to move so much faster. The bottleneck of a lot of like gameplay sessions for this game is your movement speed to get to the end game. There's no justice in a place like this. The fastest way to get to the end game is just to basically skip out on a lot of the content, to be honest. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the uh, town, and we're gonna get rid of all of the like excess stuff that we don't need. So you will have some rewards, and I definitely, definitely like to get faster attacks, but the added cold damage support 100% is like the best thing to get. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out that um, poison, and we're going to swap that one out. And then we can actually see if this is gonna be better for us. So this is 11 to 22, then plus two to seven, and uh, that's gonna be much better. So we're gonna go swap to this. Now it's a two-hander, so I'm gonna also lose out on my um, shield. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell items here and just get rid of all of these. We want to keep this uh, two-hander. So you can see this gives us the Chromatic Orb. That was the blue, red, red, and green linked. And we can identify this just in case this is way better. So this is 10 to 15, and it's a one-handed. Gives us extra attack speed, which is not bad also. We can also check the damage on our skill. So this isn't always 100%, but it's good to kind of take note of. So you can see the DPS is 100. Oh, this, this is what we don't have the strength for anyways. So we're going to run this. But uh, you can see the the DPS, if I was to maybe swap a weapon, this would change over here. So it's kind of nice to what take notes uh, of that. So you can see if we get movement speed. Yes, movement speed on boots. Nice. So we're going to swap out the boots for more movement speed. Mm -hmm. take care. And uh, we're going to be looking out for two sapphire rings. And if there's something better to upgrade, I don't think there's anything really good to upgrade right now. We can maybe upgrade this ring. This is actually almost perfectly rolled, which is 30 is the perfect. But also, we want to get dash. Um, we're going to go grab dash. So dash can be put in anywhere that's green. And now we have a mobility skill. And I can use this uh, whenever I push the button. It just gives us a little bit more mobility. And if there's anything else that I would want, I could go check the NPC to see if there's maybe a, a three-linked uh, item. Uh, honestly, for us, the best belt would be like a leather belt in the very beginning. Still alive, are we? But you can check the NPCs. You never know what they have. I mean, they're not going to usually have the best in slot items, but you can take any item in the game and pretty much make it like uh, top tier. This one over here is a, a staff. It is three-linked, but it's not the uh, the correct colors that we would want, and it's not on that like an item that we can make use out of. If it was like a, uh, a sword that was three linked, uh, then I'd be more inclined to maybe use the uh, chromatic orb on it to convert the colors, but nothing really Stay looking too good man. right now for me, but your luck may be different. So the NPCs are actually like useful in this game. So now we're gonna go right back to the prison and there's specifically one thing in the prison that we wanna do, which is called the trial of ascendancy. So we're gonna go ahead and use our mobility skill also swap where it's like located oh that's a lot of damage something uh, hit us uh, and it caused a, a condition called shock which in path of exile the things that will kill you most of the time is a really high physical damage attack or it'll be because you have some sort of debuff on you like in this instance it would have been shock oh let's go take the scroll and go on my mana is gone we're also cursed with enfeeble. That was that little like thing above our head that makes us deal less damage. 
You are taking a lot of damage. Just attack move, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. So what we're coming up to is uh, part of a trial of ascendancy. So you'll you'll see these little like green things. So this is basically kind of like a mini game where you just don't get hit by the spikes. It's pretty easy. You can go to the little side areas as little safe spots, but honestly, if you're fast enough, you can kind of get around it. You can also just take the damage, but it does do a significant amount of damage. I'll show you how much damage it does. So you'll start to bleed, uh, like your HP will start to drain, but you can still use your mobility skill here, but. It's not going to one-shot you, but later some of these do get quite challenging. These things have a lot more HP. I've just noticed the monsters in general seem a lot more tankier, uh, this league. Perhaps they want to slow the game down more. They've wanted to do that actually for a really long time in this game. So this you could just cheat by going up and you just, you just dash up. It kind of avoids the whole like mechanic. You're supposed to like kind of go in a checkered pattern. down, you drop the mask, maybe the mask will be an upgrade. We just click on this, Relief it's going to make a, a portal that we can go through all. that pretty much goes us back uh, goes back to the area. So the reason why we need to do this, this is to advance into our super class. Our super class is going to be really strong in the very very beginning. Uh, we're going to get this like bark skin, and it's a brand new like uh, build too, because it's a brand new ascendancy. So now what we're going to do is we are going to... Uh, I'll put in more attack speed. <laughs> you guessed it. So the very beginning, yes, lots of attack speed. Diablo 3 is back. Uh, this is not Diablo 3. This is a uh, Path of Exile. In fact, this game, I, I want to say it came out the same time, right? Is that 2012? Is Diablo 3? We're currently down in PoE. Nice, Black Bomba. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. If you guys haven't played the game before, uh, I recommend checking it out. What is this? Is this a secret? You can see... Uh, is there like a... Did they add this? Is this new? Because this is a mechanic that's similar to the... Uh, like... I don't know how we open that. It definitely looks like you can. But we'll see what they added in the campaign. Because sometimes they'll do a little bit of small change to the campaign, but I don't know how we access this unless it's like from the other side. Yeah, how do we access that? I'm gonna look around just a little bit because this could be interesting usually there's like a switch that you would hit oh right there so you can see on the map this is this is brand new this is going to be exciting for me because i want to see what it does so it's just like a uh these are called strong boxes basically you click on it and it's going to spawn in whatever it says that it's going to spawn in like this one's three monsters okay that one wasn't really that exciting but it's cool that that they are in the campaign this is kind of more of a mid-game thing that you'll see in a very specific area, but I guess they moved it. Ooh, nice. More slippers. Dang, he was tanky. This is, I think this might be our, is this our first shrine? No, no, we clicked on the uh, mobility one, but these are shrines just like in Diablo. You click on it and it's gonna give you a bonus. A pretty fast leveling experience, like uh, overall with this. As far as it being like stronger, I haven't leveled up with frost blades in a really long time. It was, it was pretty solid for a really long time but we're going from the upper prison to the warden's quarters now we got another skill point we're gonna now go and we can have some options here we can get more damage we can get some extra movement speed i like to get a lot of movement speed in the builds but one thing i really hate in general is the um amount of mana that like you don't have but you can also check your accuracy like right now we have 400 accuracy which is actually pretty strong this is gonna oh, give us a lot of accuracy and it gives us 91 we can maybe use this for a while because there is one node that's gonna give you crazy amounts of 
damage, which is precise techniques, which basically makes it so your character can't crit. Uh, which normally you'd think, well, why would you want to make it so your character can't crit? Well, the reason why you'd want it is because you just gain, uh, I think it's like 40% more damage, but you never can crit. You can't deal critical strikes. Is this on PC? Yes, this is on PC. What would I choose, Diablo or Path of Exile? Um, like, what would I choose? I mean, Diablo 4, it costs money, so I'd choose Path of Exile since it's free. But, I mean, I genuinely like both games. I have thousands of hours in both of the games. I like playing them both. Because sometimes one will have, like, a new update. We'll play it for, like, a week or a month or whatever. And then another one will have the update. All right, this is important. Brutus, this guy, he can pull you in. He is pretty difficult, honestly. Especially if you're playing melee. Oh my gosh, this, this guy is very, very not beginner friendly. In fact, melee in general for Path of Exile has never really been beginner friendly. But they have made some newer changes in this league, and everyone's pretty much playing melee, I would say, this league. Oh, look, look how much damage he did. I need way more armor. And if you ever need to refill your flasks... Now, you can't do these on all the bosses, but if you want to, you can always do this. If I'm like, oh man, I need to I need to go back to town to pop some potions or whatever, right? You can go right back into town. It's going to refill your potions. And if you swap your stuff right here, this will actually um, refill them. Now, we can also uh, check if we have any upgrades here. I'm going to go to the NPC. Let's go ahead and see if we got anything good here. Oh, that might be actually pretty good. So now that's going to give us, uh, I don't know, some lightning resistance. Because that, that other thing doesn't really do anything for us. So now we're going to go sell all the items we don't need to the NPC. Uh, let's see. And we are good. And then we can go see if there's any other items that we would want. Um, I would ideally like to get a better chess piece, but I need this currently for my uh, colors, the, uh, the sockets. I'll also go to this NPC and see if we got uh, uh, specifically any three linked. But now that I got this and it's giving us a bunch of accuracy rating, and you could look on pieces of gear to get extra accuracy rating in multiple different areas. It's not just that one, but our belt right now is kind of lacking. So if I can get a better belt, that's what I would want to try to shoot for. So let's see if we can get a better belt. Uh, we have like 38 life, 38 life versus 10 shield. I promise you the other one's way better. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. And uh, that'll be a nice little upgrade. And then we're gonna go right back in. And since we have a lot of accuracy, we can actually go for that node that I was talking about. Oh, he's, he's back here. And his HP doesn't regen. So it's kind of like cheating <laughs> against the boss because you get to go back and refill and he has to stay at low HP. But ideally, when he's charging up, stay away from him. Like, when he's doing that, you want to move. But if you're playing range, you don't have to worry about that. That's why range has always been so much better in PoE. There's a lot of bosses that there's, like, areas where, like, you just can't damage them. Because you have to wait for them to, to do their thing. But now, in return, if everything does double damage, like, I'm not even kidding. Most of the uh, melee skills got double the damage, if not even more, this league. But the whole game does become a lot more difficult. But... If any league is the time to try melee, it's this one because they buffed it. I still vote that it's harder to play so far. So now uh, that we killed them, we're going to be able to go to the Warden's Quarters, and then we're going to be able to exit through the top. Am I going to go melee just at the start, then going bow? Well, I, honestly, I would just play bow. Like, I think bow is genuinely better. In fact, um, I know this is kind of far in this video, but if you want to play bow, I have the full walkthrough guide. There's going to be some more updates, but... I wanted to play melee for two reasons. One, uh, it's to mix up content, but also uh, I wanted to see how good are the melee buffs. Now, at any point, we could swap right back to bow, and it's totally fine. So, uh, if you want to, that is an option. But you need to decide, like now, if you want to. I have, and I'll, I'll if I remember, I'll link the last league's guide uh, that I have for the bow that I really enjoyed. But, uh, yeah, I would still probably would recommend bow for beginners, but, you know, melee is something that people like to play, too. 
And this is this is like the hot thing, you know, just like any video game, sometimes this is the season of trying out melee. And it's honestly better later in the game. I know that it's better because of the, of the way the numbers work and the scaling. Attack one to move, attack one to move. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you guys something cool since we have another essence over here. We'll use at least one. And essences are really nice in the earlier stages in the game, and I'll show you why I like them so much. So there's there's two options here. Uh, if we want to, we can go even we can go here and get more uh, resistances. That's actually not even that bad to grab this one because we get technically uh, with this skill with the frost blades. 60% uh, of our physical damage gets converted to cold anyway, so getting elemental damage works. Uh, we can get more HP here. I'm going to rush this thing because I really like it because it gives us way more damage. Now, we have to make sure our accuracy is always above our HP, but it's really not that hard to do in this. Because if our accuracy is higher than our uh, HP, we get that bonus. If we don't, it's a little like game that you have to play with uh, micromanaging your character, but uh, it is 100% worth it. There's nothing else that's going to give you this amount of damage in the very beginning. It is so dang great. And then, hopefully pretty soon we'll get Lightning Strikes. I'll have to double check. Sometimes they move out around where, like, when you can acquire the gem in this game. So we have two Sapphire Rings. That's excellent. I'm going to upgrade the one that's 29 because it's better. So if you see where it says uh, other jewelry because it's not on a ring, uh, it doesn't say ring on this one. This one also says other jewelry. We get life per second. I want this physical damage added to attacks, or I can get regen life per second. So I'm going to use the one two damage. I'm going to upgrade this one. And now I'm going to swap out this ring because this one's just going to be better because now we have increased fire damage, which we don't need to benefit from. Then life gain per hit. Okay. It's honestly, it didn't turn out to be a good ring, but it upgrades it from a white ring to a yellow ring, which is just... It's going to have more stats on it. Now, the stats may not always be usable, but the more the better. So click on that strong box. Sometimes the strong boxes can freeze you and you're just you're just dead. Later, you're going to be able to get immunity to freeze. Uh, I always get immunity to freeze because being frozen sucks in any action RPG. Or even, you know, getting stunned. Losing control of your character is not what I consider fun. <laughs> Well, that might be actually uh, an item to grab, that coif. Because it's uh, two green and one red. I can maybe make use of that. Chain gloves. This could be an upgrade as well. Let's see if these are upgrades. Because our current gloves, they just give us one to two cold damage. The lightning resistance doesn't really matter too much for Act 1. We have one scroll of wisdom. Let's upgrade. Uh, what do I want? Gloves. Cool. Now we have... Uh, extra cold this fire damage so this is something that we'll access later in the game in the campaign she kind of like walls off this area oh we need to actually activate our mobility skill much more frequently if you want to you can hold down like right now i'm holding down q and w and as soon as our cooldown is up it will automatically do it I'm not up to that just with dash yet. faster now. Uh, when you use dash, it will use your mana, but it's not so bad. I'll save a few seconds here and there the game. So right now I'm holding down Q and W, and then I am hitting E when the uh, time is right. At least for my keybinds. That The first act is actually going to be the longest in our playthrough, but again, I highly recommend you guys to fully watch the walkthrough playthrough. Otherwise, you're, you're going to get stuck at some point, and it'll become very painful. And all that, that progress would be wasted. So... Now that we know where Fairgraves is, we're going to actually go back to this waypoint uh, eventually. He's usually really close to the waypoint, but we're going to be looking for this, like, underground ship wreckage.
but uh, even if you didn't get a sword with accuracy, you can get accuracy in other areas, but we're also going to get accuracy on the skill tree very, very soon. So, it won't really matter too much if you don't happen to reach the requirements that uh, are going to be used in the next part of this build. So in the very beginning, the nicer rings to get are, you want sapphire rings for the boss, and then uh, if we don't get another decent sapphire ring, we're gonna use the essence on the other one. It's just because it gives you a bunch of cold res. And honestly, the first act is almost the most difficult in the entire game. Since we're coming up towards like burying, what are we at? Oh, dang, we're already at an hour here. All right, we'll go through this one a little faster here. So it looks like you just kind of destroy these growths. Okay, and then we destroy this last growth, and then that's it. Hopefully we get something good. Let's see what we get. And then later we're gonna get a bunch of uniques, and it's gonna make, again, the whole game's gonna become like super easy mode. Very soon. And by very soon, I mean within the next like couple hours. So now you see we're in the, there's an era called the Cavern of Wrath, but that's not where we want to go yet. We still need to go to this like underground, okay, there we go, the ship cave. And we need to find the corpse of something for one of the quests. I'm not up to that just yet. And let's keep on going. What class are we playing? We are playing the Ranger. Ranger's one of my favorite classes in the game. Ooh, what's this? Is that part of the quest? Oh, what is this? I don't know what this is. This is new. I, I It could be something super hard. We're just going to get absolutely deleted. But I'm going to activate it. It's brand new. Oh, that was it? That was really fast. There's this part of it and we still need to do something. Hmm. I have no idea why that was like so fast, but that was really fast. Some of these, like that one says detonates nearby corpse, so be cautious on some of these when you click on them on the strong boxes. Blah, blah, blah. Nice, we have two skill points. Put it in in the moment. We're just looking for the corpse and then uh, we can uh, exit the area. In fact, I think that they have updated this to make it so there is a exit right when you get the uh, quest objective. Having this little shrine is really nice. It makes us go super fast. Okay, yeah, they have updated it. So we'll attack the boss. Okay, there we go. Love having that shrine. It's so nice to have. When you uh, swap zones, by the way, the shrines used to go away. But now we're gonna go ahead and grab this. And since uh, what we have is a projectile, we can get this crit later. But the first thing to do is get this. Once we get this, oh, it's just, <laughs> the game is so much better <laughs> in terms of damage. And then we gotta go talk to Fairgraves and then he's gonna try to kill us. The character looks pretty memes now, but later you can swap cosmetics. They actually have a lot of free cosmetics in the game too. If you complete um, a bunch of the, like, kind of like the seasonal quest line, if you've ever played Diablo, it's kind of like that. There's also a battle pass in the game, but you do have to buy that. There's no, like, f there is technically free tiers in the battle pass, but. Okay, we got him down. And then now we're going to go up and to the left. In a bad situation, so, now our goal is going to be, uh, let's go back to the top left where we actually need to go for the rest of it. But there is, technically we can go get the reward right now. So we can go back to a town. And there's a lot of quests like this where you can like go back to town, but since it's like a beginner's guide, it's always better to just get the skill uh, ASAP because now our damage is gonna go up. And we can also get some extra rewards. So we're gonna get the book of skill. So the important thing is getting this because now watch our damage. So uh, right now, we need to make sure our accuracy is more than our HP. So we have 668 for accuracy. And we have 300 life, and that's going to be easy. So you can see our damage right now, right? Our damage per second, 139. So 
If I open up the passive tree and I get this, watch our damage. This is, this is I know my face is blocking it, so. Uh, we go from 139, I hit accept because we're getting precise technique. We go from 139 to 195. That is a big, big chunk of damage that uh, we want to get. And now we can look at other skills. So let me see what other strike skills exist. Okay, so what are the strike skills we have? Oh, this just has like the keyword. Uh, I, I want to get lightning strike. Uh, can we get that? Oh, we have galvanic arrow. Some of these, uh, depending on your class, uh, they unlock earlier. And if you ever want to get a very specific uh, gem, there are a few different websites. There's like the wiki. So uh, you can see that this uh, is obtained from, it says Sirens Condense Act 1. Uh, and that is also uh, available after you do uh, on the Sirens Condense Nessa. Okay. Is it not here now? Sometimes they move some of these around. Is it not... Is Am I crazy? It's, it's not here. But again, sometimes they remove these. Uh, there's also the, this is the website I believe you don't want to use, which is the Path of Exile fandom, but um, we can go down and it'll usually tell you like when you can get the skill. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, this one's probably, this one, like I said, it's probably outdated. outdated. But you can check out what are the things that you may want for your build. We can look at other melee skills as well. If I want to type in the word melee, I can maybe find other skills. Maybe I want to try out something else. That's fine. I'm just going to stick with this for now. And then later we can get lightning strike. And um, I'm pretty sure. Oh, what was it? Sirens condense, right? Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, okay. We got, we got to finish that quest. And then we get it. So it is it is still in this one. So we can also grant ourselves precision, which gives us more accuracy, which uh, this is going to be good, too. I'm going to uh, pick this up. So this way, you should be able to get that um, that node and not have a problem. We're going to keep this in case I want to use this. And then let's see if this is better. We have uh, dex and max life. This one gives us... Do I need int for anything? No. Uh, okay, it gives us energy, shield 7... Okay, this is going to be way better. So we're going to go run it in here. And then we're going to go sell all the stuff that we don't need. And then if you don't happen to have sapphire rings, pick these up from the NPC. Uh, they're they're going to be definitely useful very soon. I'm going to put this on this, unless we get something much better. In fact, that coral ring is much worse. So we can just also destroy the item if I don't want it. But you should always try to sell it for the scroll fragments to the NPCs. And let's see if we have any other items that we can get. Uh, if we get three green is kind of what we're looking for. If, so we see an armor piece with three green and they're all linked. That's what I want. Or like a sword. But unfortunately, we didn't see it. So let's go ahead and now continue. So we left off at the ship graveyard, right? And... I'm gonna go up to the top right. And instead of going down through the cave for the NPC, this time we're gonna go continue to the final axe boss. Hello, Jerry, how you doing? What builder class could I recommend that's fun and easy? Um, what we're playing right now is pretty flexible. If you wanna play a lot of different things with this, you can because it's just any elemental skill pretty much. So I could recommend this and the full guide will be up on YouTube. We're actually doing it right now, so yeah, it'll be there. Pee-wee came out. Yeah, Pee-wee's been out. DP, if you're talking about Pee-wee 2, Pee-wee 2 is not out. So we're going to just move and attack. It's usually how I like to play against these rare monsters, because then we're still making some progress on the, uh, the movement. Go. Unfortunately, he didn't drop anything good. We're just going to continue. That's where we can hold down the W. We can make this a little bit faster here. Definitely pick up all the scrolls of wisdom and the portals. It'll be it'll be nice to have a bunch later, but eventually you can stop picking them up. I still think that they should have been designed to be like free, especially portal scrolls. I like the sword because it gives us a bunch of accuracy. Oh, so that one gem that we got, Precision, 
uh, what I can do is if I activate this, it's going to give me a bunch of precision. Gives me like a our accuracy rating, and that will allow us to pretty much upkeep our um, thing that we got called precise technique. That makes it so we have to have more accuracy rating than life in order for this thing to work. Otherwise, it will turn off and uh, we'll lose all that damage bonus. But this is one thing you can see where uh, mana, where it says reserved, that makes it so our mana, instead of it being like 136, we are now 104. So it reserves uh, a section of the mana that's like blocked off, reduces your maximum mana that you can have. But in return, you get an aura that just kind of lasts forever. You never have to activate it again. So now we have a lot of options on what we're gonna get. I would like to get this extra resistances I'm just going to get this one point into this one, just because it's going to give us resistances, and then we're going to get a lot more HP. But remember, we can't go over, if I go to my offense, I can see my accuracy right now uh, is 843. So I cannot get over 843 HP, otherwise I will have a penalty on that um, specific thing. We'll go ahead and interact with this one time, as last time it ended so fast. But overall, like... To give you guys my thoughts on the first act in terms of the uh, new league mechanic, if it's worth doing, I'd say skip all of them. I haven't dropped one thing, unless, you know, I just got really unlucky. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's worth doing. Damage is feeling really good now, though. Ever since we got that one upgrade, I, I really feel the damage just so much better. So much better. But like I said, Act 1 is quite long. We're almost done with it. We just got to fight the final boss here. And uh, this is where we get the quest. And then we get Lightning Strike. And Lightning Strike, in my personal opinion, is much better. If you want to, you can make a portal in case, you know, things get dicey. You can always go back. I always like to have one up first. Used to kind of want to do it outside, but they have patched it, and uh, you don't don't need to do that anymore. But when she casts her, like, uh, little blizzard ability, you want to not stand in it. It's pretty easy. Oh, what we should do. Here, I'll be a, a, a good content creator. I forgot to equip the uh, the ring. I should equip it. I can I can totally fight her without it. But to, to make it like, you know, better for beginners, you definitely want to have two sapphire rings and it's going to make this like a joke. So unfortunately, it didn't really roll super good. It has actual one to two cold damage, but our cold resistance is, which is, is 65 right here. I mean, this is going to be an absolute cakewalk now, but if you need to get a sapphire ring, you can also just go get it from the NPC. If you don't have two of them, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. It just makes this boss fight so much easier. It's not like this boss fight is like particularly super, super hard or anything, but it is actually one of the harder ones in the earlier stages because your character isn't super OP yet. But we will get there. So that's her first phase down, and now we're on phase two. Phase two, there's like these water geysers that come up. Don't stand in them. It does damage. Ideally attack once, move, attack once, move, because otherwise you're gonna get chilled, which will make you slower. So, try to stand behind the boss, like attack once, move, attack once, move. But sometimes it's kind of difficult if, you know, there's all these water geysers up. Uh, we got her halfway down on the second phase. Almost, almost done. But once we get that Shiver Sting, which is a, uh, a sword that's really, really cheap and uh, unique, we're going to be going through content so much faster. Boom, and we got her. Pick up these items just to sell at the NPC, and let's go straight to Act 2, and then... Uh, We'll go ahead and uh, start Act 2. And you see this guy just talk to him. He's basically going to help you kill stuff. And like he, he hunts beasts. Basically, you have to get them low enough, and then he'll kind of catch them like Pokemon. And he has like, his own like 
unique mechanic. Oh, there's frost blades. But yeah, I would say skip out on all these league mechanics. I'm not gonna do this one here. It just makes the video a lot longer and unnecessary for now. I, I will do like one or two of them per act to tell you at which point is it maybe worth it, but your mileage may vary. It's an action RPG. You can get you know lucky or unlucky. Big damage difference after getting that. Nice, nice. All right. Can't see why I'd want to do that here. All right. So now we are in Act Two, and we're gonna go and put our final skill point over here. And like I said, I just want to get enough resistances, and we're gonna get even more resistances in this act. But that's gonna go and wrap it up for Part One, Act One of our Path of Exile playthrough. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys are subbed with the uh, bell noti on, as I'll be dropping a lot of these videos very soon. I'm just going to pretty much grind through all the content, and this way you guys will have everything. Check the pinned as well as uh, the description for a lot of these other things that if you want to check out, they are going to help you out. But uh, yeah, I will also leave like the uh, path to building just so we can kind of have reference. This is kind of what our skill tree looks like at the end of the first act, but things will change up as we go along. But anyways, drop a like on your way out, and I'll see you guys in part two very soon.